What's up, Lions fans, and welcome to another episode of Inside Columbia Athletics. I'm your host, Dallin Cuff. Thanks a lot for tuning in. There's a lot going on here at the Morningside Heights campus as all the winter sports are in the midst of their Ivy League campaigns, but also a lot happening up at Baker Field as the spring sports are getting going all in practice and look to go forward for their seasons here in the next couple weeks. We have a chance to catch up with the women's lacrosse coach, Liz Kittleman. She comes from a very successful program at Penn. This is her second year at Columbia. We'll talk about how she's building this program in year two and what they got on the horizon here in the next couple weeks. But where we begin is we'll sit down with Mark Sisko, the Lions starting center on the men's basketball team. Mark has been on fire as of late. In the six games in IV competition, he's fifth in the league in scoring at 13 points a game. He's first in rebound, just sh rebounds, just shy of nine rebounds a game. He's first in field goal percentage at 69%. That is an ungodly number. And he's also first in free throw percentage at 95%. He's out of control right now, but the team has struggled a little bit. They're two and four out of the gate. We'll talk to him about his performance, but how he helps get them back on track to their winning ways, which they became so accustomed to in the non-league season. So Mark, in the last six games, you've had a great run. I rattled off your stats earlier. They did a great job first in the league at a lot of different things. Has there been something you've been doing differently or your opponents doing differently or the team doing differently to get you really involved and allow you to kind of take over some games? Uh, I think one of the biggest differences is I've been really trying to find uh, my guards on the outside, which you know kind of makes them, they come to double off me, I find the guard, and then you know they close out, and then when I get them one-on-one, -on -one, which really makes a big difference because you know one-on-one, -on -one, it's a lot easier to score than when there's three guys running at yeah. you. So, uh, so I think the fact that I'm trying to find them makes them kind of stay off me a little bit. You know, they're starting to hit, hit a lot of shots again, and it's really helping our team out. In the, in the Dartmouth game you guys played last Friday, you, you had the game-winning shot. You had established yourself early on the game and were making plays. So when you come into the huddle, you 62 all, I think 10 seconds left, 12 seconds left, whatever it was, and coach calls a play basically designed to get you the ball. What's going through your head at that point in time? Uh, you know, when situations like that arise, there's really, you can just have confidence in yourself. You know, if you go, in, if you go into the play thinking like, you know, if I don't make this, then you know, everyone's going to look down on me, whatever you're thinking. If it's negative, then you're not going to make it. But if you go in there thinking, you know, I'll, like this is what I want to do, like this is what I've been waiting for, you know, uh, then you know, you hit the shot and it feels great. <laughs> is there a lot less pressure being that it was 62 all? So in, in your mind, it worse, we're going to overtime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it was 59, 60, there was a lot more pressure, <laughs> yeah. and, and who knows? But uh, yeah, the fact that it was tie game, the worst that would happen is a miss overtime, and hopefully we pull out there. But I was just glad that I that I went in. <laughs> yeah, we all were. <laughs> so so you, you guys win that game at Dartmouth. It always makes the trip on the road that much better to head to Harvard. You got Harvard, Saturday night game, top 25 team in the country. It was going to be a packed house. You guys went out, played a tough game, and you lost by a few. What were some of the things you take away? Because I think personally that might have been the best team game you guys played, happened to be against the best opponent in the Ivy League. What would you guys take away from that game, although it's still a loss? Uh, you know, just the fact that we hung in, hung in there with them. Um, you know, I think we played really well, like you said. Uh, we had a chance to win it. Um, but we take away, I mean, they're coming here. And yep. when they come here, it's going to be a different story. You know, we're going in the game thinking we're going to win. And uh, that's, the only, that's the only mindset you can have. And we, we all believe we can. That's one good thing about this team is, you know, all the coaches believe, all the players believe, and that's the first step. Within their team, Keith Wright and Kyle Casey are two of the best 4-5 combination, if not the best 4-5 in the league. And Keith Wright was player of the year last year. What's it like to play against him, and particularly in that environment, up at Harvard, as a guy that's a, you know, looked at as probably the best big guy in the league, and you, your emergence as of late? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a great player, and uh, you know, he's strong around the basket, he finishes very well, got a great field goal percentage. Um, it's tough, you know, but I feel like I, I tried to make it hard for him to score, you know, bump him as much as I could, try to get him off balance, and he was doing the same thing to me, and uh, you know, it, was, it was a fight down low, yeah. and uh, you know, he's a great player, and he played well. For you in particular, you got caught in foul trouble because of that bang. You were physical, and you're playing on the road against top 25 team. You're not going to get many calls, and yeah. then you guys <laughs> suffered through that, and that, that is what it is. How were you able to overcome and still be a factor in the game through all the foul trouble? Uh, you know, when you get in there, you just you can't really be thinking about it too much. Because if you think about it, then you're not going to go after a certain ball. You're not going to get any rebounds. You're not going to be able to, he, he'll just be able to score at will. Because if you're not bumping him, then mm -hmm. that's it. So you just got to go, kind of go in there with the same mindset and just go as hard as you can. You know, maybe don't, don't do anything stupid, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, at the same time, play hard. So if you look forward now, you guys are two and four in the league, but you guys have played good basketball. You, you've got a winning record, and you have a chance to really do some good things in this league. You got Brown coming in at home. Last year, Sean McGonagall as a freshman came in and had 39 points, just unconscious with that whole game. How do you guys, what do you have to do to, to contain him and keep down a, a Brown team that's young but pretty talented? 
I mean, he's a great player, obviously, at 39 points. And to contain him, we just need to, uh, I, don't, I assume Miko will probably wind up guarding him. Uh, he'll, we just got to keep him in front. You know, and Miko's a great defender. He's been guarding uh, a lot of on-the-ball stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think he'll do a great job. So that'll stop him. And then after him, you know, we all just got to play our game and just uh, defend well. Whenever we defend well, we play really well. So we just got to defend really well, and then that'll turn into our offense, and we'll do well. And I know you guys don't like to do this, and no coach likes to do it. They're looking past one opponent. I'm not saying win or lose, but anyway, let's look at Yale for a second. They come in here as, you know, a lot of people pick them as the second-best team in the league coming into the season. They have Greg Mangano, who thought he was going to go NBA, go to the NBA after his junior year last year. Been a bit ambitious, but still a very, very good player. <laughs> a little bit. 6'10", can score with his back to the basket, step out and shoot threes. What's, what's it like for you, again, getting to go up against a guy that's, that's very good in this league with a chance to continue to, to prove you're just as good as all these guys? I'm excited. You know, uh, the, whole, the whole summer I've been looking forward to playing against him. And, uh, you know, it's right around the corner, and I'm really excited just to go up against him and play as hard as I can and uh, see what happens. What can, what can you do, knowing his game, to be successful on both ends of the court? Uh, on defense, um, you know, he can shoot, he can drive. I might not be guarding him the whole yep. game. Uh, you know, he plays the four, I think, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. So John's going to be guarding him. But, you know, if he gets past John or if anything happens, I'll be there to help. But I think John will do a pretty good job on him. And then on offense, um, if he guards me, I, I think I'm stronger than him. Yep. So I'll just kind of try to, try to bully him around down there, make some nice moves, and uh, hopefully he'll go in. I know he's a good shot blocker, but I'll try to, I'll try to finish over. <laughs> You've been finishing over a lot of people. Yeah. You're shooting almost 70%, which is just an unbelievable number. What's been able to make that happen? Is just patience in the post? Is it, is it, is it all the hard work paying off? What, 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 is, what has it been? It's, but most of the time, you know, like I said before, I'm finding the guards, so it's one-on-one. -on -one. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, if you make a move, a lot of the time they're just either a hook shot or a layup, and, you know, there's not, not really too much. Uh, they don't really contest it that well since, you know, I'm bigger than a lot of them, kind of just get it up over them, and, you know, just practice makes perfect. So I just go out there, practice every day, practice my hook shots, practice everything, and they're going in. Like we said already, you guys are two and four in the league, but you have home weekend coming up, a chance to get the back to 500. How important is, is it for you guys not only to get these wins, but play well at home, which this year you guys have not done that well. You played very well on the road, but sometimes struggled at home. How important are these two games right now? They're really important. Um, you know, the, the better we play, you know, we still have a chance. Uh, you know, we got, we got three losses. But you know, uh, Harvard Harvard loses a couple games. You know, we're in there. You know, uh, the more that the longer the Ivy League season goes on, the more crunched it gets. You mm -hmm. know, teams get losses here and there, and people get bunched up together. So we're still looking looking to win the league. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate. It. Congratulations and Fine. good luck. Thanks a lot. Thanks.